Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the DRF Bets race of the day for Friday, January the 18th. It's race number seven at the Big A, and you can bet this race with a DRF Bets account. Deposit 50, bet 100, sign up easy at bets. Field for our DRF Bets race of the day. It's an optional claiming event for Phillies and Mares. You can access free formulator pass performances on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Download them and handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order. We are expecting a lot of wet weather this week in New York. Hopefully we can get this race in, Mike. And we'll begin with the number one, Shimmering Moon. Third start off the bench for Linda Rice. This mare is usually rock solid, and she usually comes up a little bit short. What's the key to victory here? Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a fan of her. She doesn't win very often, but she tends to show up every time. Um, is 0 for 7 on a wet track, but I don't really think a wet track hinders her chances. I think it's she's probably neutral as far as surface goes. Listen, I just think she's a contender in this field. I've liked her in each of her last two starts, Dan. I bet her both times. She couldn't get it done. A horse I will use today, but I'll use her with a little bit more trepidation this time. She just doesn't win that much. I thought she got beaten by a decent filly last time out. Not Naples Princess is okay and would certainly have fit in this spot. Yep. Shimmering Moon gave her all she could handle and then ended up finishing second. Our girl Abby is the number two going out for Danny Gargan. Avoided claim last time out for administrative reasons. I'm not concerned about any sort of physical issue. This horse got good for Gargan, winning a couple of off the turf races last time out. Solid enough second behind a horse that came back to run third with a 79 buyer. This filly has a good amount of speed. You've got to expect her close to the Pace. Yeah, I think you'll see her speed in this race, too. We'll see if she's good enough. I feel like she might be a little bit cheap for some of the horses she's facing in here, but she's in her best form right now. That race last time she faced that class dropper, DJ's favorite, just couldn't get anywhere near her. She did the best she could do in there. Um, I think she will have to do better to beat this field. What's the deal with the number three no deal who returned off of a short layoff for Phil Serpy has dominated weaker competition in her last two races? Is this simply a case of a filly beaten up on horses that just couldn't warm up the rest of the horses in this field? Or is no deal a filly that was waiting for dirt her whole life, was racing on turf for most of it, and has now found out what she wants to do? I think it might be a little bit of both of those. I mean, maybe she really did want dirt the whole time. Her last two races are certainly good and an improvement on her turf form. Uh, but they were against much weaker horses. And she's just facing, this isn't the strongest, uh, you know, 1X kind of field that you're ever going to see, but she's facing some better horses this time. The number four, Hattie L. made a belated career debut for Todd Pletcher, December, mid-December of her three-year-old season. The patience was rewarded. She was a gate-to-wire winner for Todd, but the buyer's speed figure came back real light, and I just don't like the field she beat at all. To me, this is a gigantic hike in class. I mean, I feel the same way about her. Um, she was able to get it done. I did think she showed good speed in that debut. I think that's a positive. There's not a ton of pace in this race. I suppose that could help her, but that race came back just woefully slow and she did not beat a good field. I think she might be in a little bit tough here. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Uh, we expect a blue bar situation for uh, the race favoring horses on or near the early lead. We do have Hattie L. out there on the lead. Not sure she's as fast if our girl Abby wants to show that early speed. Big birthday, the number five might sit a really nice trip in here. She is the horse to beat based on any sort of speed figure metric that you weigh. She's even money on the morning line for trainer Chad Brown. And last time out off of a little bit of a layup, I thought she ran just fine, finishing third behind a couple of decent fillies. If she runs back to her usual fig, she probably just going to beat these horses. That's how I looked at it, Dan. I, I'm not a huge fan of hers. She is certainly no superstar. Um, she is what she is. Her typical race just makes her a handful against a field like this one. I thought she ran well last time. Those two horses that finished ahead of her, just a lot better than what she's facing in this, but I just think she's going to win. Devilish Romance, the number six, hasn't been seen since January 26th of 2018. She was claimed that day by Bruce Brown, who has her in for the waiver claim of 25000 She's not eligible to be claimed in this race. She took on some decent competition at Gulfstream back in 2018, but I just have a feeling this is Bruce hitting the reset button here, starting her back in a sprint, and eventually maybe stretching her out to the middle distances she really appreciates. Yeah, there aren't many worse signs, I don't think, than claiming a horse and then laying it up for almost a full year after that. That can't be a good sign. Um, if she comes back off of this long layup and can run something like her best race, something like she ran two starts back, she could contend in this field. But it's pretty tough to take her off of this long layup. Bruce Brown sending out live horses the whole meet, though.
Conversely, the seven Gypsy Janie claimed in very sharp form, wheels back off a 31 to 44 day layoff, only be $25,000 platers last time out, but this is a really nice outside post position. I don't want to give this filly short shrift. She has won six races in her career. She obviously likes aqueduct and she loves a wet track, which is what she probably is going to be getting on Friday if they do go. Yeah, I think all those things uh, make her a contender. Then you add in the fact that she's just claimed by low-profile connections off of Jimmy Riccio and Jeremiah Englehart. This horse will get overlooked in the wagering here, and we'll probably just outrun her odds. Can she beat the uh, Chad Brown horse, Big Birthday, if that one shows up? Probably not, but she can get a piece of this. Let's take a look at our top pick for the Friday race of the day. We like to try to beat the chalk. We're just not going to try it in here. Big Birthday, even money on the morning line, just has the fig edge, probably works out a good trip in here. Anybody underneath you're interested in? I mean, I just don't like the alternatives against that horse. Shimmering Moon, for sure, would be a horse that I would be using underneath. But other than that, it's pretty tough to get excited about anybody else. I'll go 5-2 in our DRF bets race of the day for Friday, the 7th at Aqueduct. Make sure to bet the card if they run. If not, you can always bet Gulfstream. With a DRF bets account, you deposit 50, you bet with 200 at bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for race number 7 at the Big A, 3.58 Eastern. Best of luck.